Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Detective Acting Superintendent Tim Trasize, and I'm the uh, relieving regional crime coordinator for the South Eastern Police Region. Uh, this morning, uh, I'm uh, sorry to report that uh, we had a very tragic finding uh, last night. Um, you'd be aware that there was a police investigation being conducted yesterday in relation to the deaths of a man and woman who were located in a unit in Arbor Avenue, Rabina. Uh, as a result of police investigations, uh, a motor vehicle, a silver Holden Viva station wagon, was located in northern New South Wales uh, in bushland outside a casino. Uh, late last night at around about 9.30 and unfortunately located in that vehicle uh, was a deceased uh, male and uh, a young five-year-old girl. Uh, you'd be aware that a child abduction alert was put out yesterday afternoon in relation to uh, Kyla Rogers and uh, it's uh, a very sad and tragic uh, event that uh, we discovered Kyla's uh, body last night and uh, she was deceased. Uh, in relation to the uh, investigation, the uh, police um, support uh, and prayers and our hearts go out to the families of the victims in relation to this matter and their families. A number of the families are residents of New Zealand and uh, we are liaising closely with the New Zealand Police in relation to providing all support we can to the families that are in New Zealand. Uh, we, uh, in difficult circumstances like this when we have uh, a triple homicide and what we believe at this stage to be a suicide it's not easy to explain exactly uh, why, it, why this happened. Uh, what we know is that uh, two of the victims had been in a long-term relationship and that relationship uh, broke up. It had been uh, broken up for some seven or eight months. And the uh, deceased uh, lady, who is Kyla's mum, uh, had moved to the Gold Coast to start a life uh, afresh. Uh, we know she'd been residing in the Arbor Avenue unit for approximately two weeks and uh, Kyla was going to a local school. We know uh, early yesterday morning uh, Kyla's uh, maternal grandfather attended to collect her to take her to school as he uh, was of the habit of doing and unfortunately uh, uh, in quite tragic circumstances he discovered uh, uh, the uh, incident inside the unit where there appeared to have been uh, quite some violence and there were uh, two, people's de two persons deceased within the unit. Uh, subsequently a major police investigation commenced uh, involving detectives from the Gold Coast Criminal Investigation Branch and the Homicide Investigation Unit. Uh, our investigations uh, centred on trying to identify the deceased male person in the unit. At this stage uh, we weren't aware of that person's identity. Uh, they also said it obviously uh, has a high priority on trying to identify the location of Kyla. Uh, it became apparent to us on information that we had at hand uh, that Kyla had gone to bed in the unit uh, Sunday night but she was now missing come Monday morning. Well, we commenced investigations to try and locate Kyla's dad. Uh, his whereabouts at this stage were unknown but uh, as I said already we weren't aware of who uh, the deceased male person was in the unit uh, in the early stages of this investigation. Uh, investigations as the day unfolded uh, led us to believe that uh, Kyla's father may have been in northern New South Wales. Uh, this was able to be established through use of um, various technologies which allow us to, uh, in some circumstances, identify the location of mobile telephones. Uh, it indicated to us that uh, it was possible that uh, Kyla's uh, father's mobile telephone was in uh, northern New South Wales. We contacted New South Wales Police and uh, and worked closely with them yesterday in relation to trying to identify uh, exactly where this telephone uh, was. Unfortunately it was not a specific defined location and it was very difficult uh, to identify exactly uh, where uh, the phone was. Uh, ultimately we were, became confident that um, Kyla's father was not the deceased person within the unit and that Kyla's father was unaccounted for and that Kyla's uh, father's car, the silver Holden Viva, was unaccounted for. Initially there were a number of possible motor vehicles that he uh, may have been uh, associated with. Uh, as a result of this the child abduction alert was put out uh, and as we've subsequently learnt uh, a member of the New South Wales, uh, Northern New South Wales community uh, reported to police after hearing a media report uh, that they had seen uh, a similar car to this uh, on a dirt track 100 metres off the Bruxner Highway at about 10.30 that morning. 
uh, they passed this information on the New South Wales Police, patrols were conducted and the motor vehicle was located. Uh, New South Wales Police subsequently uh, entered the motor vehicle and uh, found the two deceased persons. Uh, whilst uh, identification has not been uh, confirmed yet, we um, sadly suspect that uh, the, the deceased persons are Kyla and her father. Uh, the cause of death uh, will be subject to a post-mortem, but uh, we suspect uh, that death may have been caused by carbon monoxide poisoning. Uh, the matter is now going to be inv overviewed and investigated uh, in relation to uh, a coronial, uh, coronial investigation in both Queensland and New South Wales. And uh, in due course, uh, I guess further information will uh, unfold in relation to uh, attempting to explain um, why, why this occurred. It's obviously when these tragic events happen that we all look for answers in trying to explain why it happened and uh, unfortunately uh, rarely is there a simple explanation as to uh, why uh, such a tragic event happened and uh, such an innocent life as Kyla's has been lost in these uh, sad circumstances today. Needless to say, the investigators are fairly gutted in relation to uh, the result that happened last night. We were, we were hopeful of having a positive result, but uh, it didn't happen. And uh, there we are. Counselling provided to police officers? Uh, look, our priority at the moment is to provide all support and counselling for the families, uh, but police officers, yes, uh, in, in due course they will be. Have you identified the second male that's in the, the, in the unit? Look, we, uh, we do believe we now know the identity of the male. It hasn't been released yet. Uh, his uh, next of kin, we believe, are in New Zealand, and we're doing everything we can to make sure that all of his next of kin are advised. Uh, we believe the uh, male person to be a family friend of uh, both Kyla's mother and father. So they weren't in a relationship, it was just a friend? It's, it's too early to say uh, what the relationship was, if any. Uh, he had been a, fa a friend of the, uh, both the mother and the father for some time. And where was the baby through all of this, her, her other baby? Kyla has a 20-month-old uh, brother, and uh, fortuitously, um, on the Sunday night, he had spent the evening with his grandparents. Do you think Kyla may have witnessed what happened? Can you uh, investigations uh, indicate that probably not. Probably not. There's some some evidence of the scene which indicates that uh, she was asleep in bed the whole time. Is the baby also the the child of the um, the, the father? We, we believe we believe so. Yes. Can, can you give us some ages on the victims? Besides Kyle. Uh, I can. Um, Kyle's uh, mum is 31 years of age. The uh, deceased male who was found uh, with Kyle's mum is 33 years of age. Sorry, guys. And are you releasing the name of Kyla's mum? I think it's I've got a uh, look, I think, I think we will later today, officially. Uh, it, is, it is Tanya Simpson, yes. Um, and obviously Tanya's parents are aware of everything, but we're just making sure that um, everyone needs to know has been told. Yeah. So when you spoke of the New Zealand connection, um, that, that's only in relation to the, the other deceased. Uh, uh, and also uh, Kyla's dad. Yeah. So the New Zealand connection is Kyla's dad? Kyla's dad and the other male who was found deceased so in the unit. Kyla's mum is not from there. Not that I'm aware of, no. Her parents live here at, uh, on the Gold Coast. And it was her parents that the baby... Okay. That's right. Do you know what yeah. part of uh, New Zealand? Or? Uh, I believe uh, one family is from Hamilton and one family is uh, from the vicinity of Nelson. Kyla's birthday on the Sunday, on the Saturday or Sunday before her death? No, I can't. Sorry, I can get that information for you, but I can't confirm that. Is and sorry, the age of the other... Um, of, um, the, uh, the father. The Kyla's father uh, is 40 years of age. You mentioned um, that someone in northern New South Wales had spotted the car at 10.30 in the morning, so do police believe that they may have died a lot earlier in the day? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, we won't probably know until the post-mortem is completed, but uh, we certainly suspect that they possibly have been deceased uh, during the night uh, after the incident at the unit. So by the time that person drove past at 10.30 in the morning, uh, they were already deceased. Uh, that's only an assumption, but we'll know more um, after the post-mortem. So there's no, I mean, as far as issuing the, the child abduction alert, you're confident that that was issued at the earliest possible time? Yeah, it was. It, well, it's, it's, it's easy to be clever in hindsight in these matters, but you can't release it until you've actually got something speci specific to release. Uh, at that stage, we, we had to release information about a vehicle, and uh, we weren't sure exactly what vehicle he was in. Um, we also, um, for operational reasons, um, at that stage were still hopeful that we could use other means to actually locate them in northern New South Wales. Um, uh, unfortunately, it didn't, didn't pan out that way. Do, do, you think, um, do, you, do you think that um, Kyla and the father may have 
they'd been dead before the bodies were discovered at Rabina? Or? Uh, that's, that's quite a possibility. It's quite a possibility, but it's, it's only an assumption. We don't, we don't know yet. So you're thinking perhaps Kyla and her dad died on the Sunday night? Look, we, we think it's a possibility. Um, the, the mobile telephone uh, that we were tracing was in northern New South Wales in the early hours of Monday morning. So they were already down there in that location. Uh, we don't know at what point, though, um, the carbon monoxide uh, incident took place. Is it fair to say that um, you don't have anyone else you're looking at now? You, you believe the suspect was... Look, investigations are continuing. The major incident room at Burley Head CIB will continue for some days yet, and uh, there's a, obviously a lot of inquiries to be run out. Um, but at this stage, um, we believe we've had a, a triple homicide with a suicide. Jim, Jim, how hard is this for you as a father to, to cope with something like this, even even though you're a police officer and see this kind of thing? I mean, it's tragic, isn't it? Yeah, look, it is. Uh, when I got the phone call at 20, about 27 minutes past nine last night, it was just a kick in the guts uh, that, that the result had come. And it, I think it was for, for everyone, the whole Queensland and Gold Coast community would have the same feeling this morning, getting up and, uh, and hearing that Kyla was now deceased. Uh, it's just a waste. Uh, all, all of these people dying is a waste, but particularly an innocent child uh, like this one. Tim, given that uh, the neighbours did hear screaming but no one seems to have acted on that, do you think that there's a message there for, for people? Yeah, look, again, it's uh, wonderful hindsight, isn't it? Um, look, clearly, um, if people hear uh, screaming and they hear a distressed person in distress, they should contact police. Uh, it's better to safety than to be sorry. I certainly make no criticism of any of the people who live in that location, but um, who knows how, how things might have unfolded if um, we'd had an early phone call. Um, was there any um, indication that the children were known to the department at all, child safety? Was that no, we have, um, our investigations to date have shown uh, uh, no evidence of domestic violence in the family and they've shown no evidence of uh, any child protection matters. To this stage we've uncovered no history at all. No AVO or anything out? On no, the, nothing. Yeah. Were they a married couple or de facto? No, they, uh, they weren't married. They had, uh, had been making plans to marry. I understand even wedding invitations had been sent out. Uh, they'd been together some eight years, um, but the, unfortunately the relationship broke down uh, prior to the wedding. And where had they been living before the Gold they'd, Coast? They'd been managing a caravan park in Inverell. And was he still down in Inverell and she came up here? Or? Uh, she, she left Inverell and moved to her parents' place on the Gold Coast, and uh, he left the caravan park uh, approximately, approximately one month after that. So he had, he had been absent from the caravan park for some months prior to this incident. Do you know where he had been living? No, we don't. Yeah, we don't. I mean, has he got connections in Inverell or Northern New South Wales? Uh, I guess they established some relationships and friendships while they were there, but we don't know uh, what uh, yeah, the no, extent of those are. No. Not from that area, or anything. No, well, he's yeah. from New Zealand originally. Yeah. And so the cause of death of Tanya and the man found in the unit hasn't been established yet? No, look, uh, early indications is that uh, they were probably stabbed. Um, but we don't know um, exactly what the cause of death is until the postmortem has been conducted. Could I just clarify, they were together for, like you said, eight years and they had been in Braille. Was Were they together for that entire duration in Australia or had the relationship started in New Zealand? I don't know, I'm sorry. Have you spoken to the family yourself? Um, no, I agree. I, I haven't. Inspector Brian Swan has got a carriage of those matters. Yeah. And could I just clarify, from what you said, I take it there are pretty strict procedures around that govern when you issue a child abduction alert? Yeah, and they, and they vary depending on the nature of the abduction too. Obviously, um, an abduction where it's done by a stranger, as distinct from where you suspect you know who's done the abduction, uh, has some um, operational impact in relation to the timeliness of these matters. Um, uh, as the day unfolded yesterday, you know, we, we started to suspect that it was possible that Kyla's father was the person who'd taken Kyla, and uh, that's a totally different situation to where you just get a child taken from the street uh, by a complete stranger. There was no contact issues at all as far as um, him having contact with the kids that he was uh, Look, I'm not, not aware of any, Greg, I'm sorry. So as far as you're concerned, you're, you're confident that alert went out as early as possible? Uh, it did, without a doubt, without a doubt. There was a number of other operational issues in relation to the investigation that we were dealing with in relation to New South Wales. Um, we, we were hopeful that we would be able to um, locate them early, uh, early in the day with the mobile phone, but it didn't un eventuate. And as I said, you can't release the alert unless you actually have some information to release in the alert. Um, and, we, and we didn't have it at that stage. Any Did reason why you wouldn't put out a description of him and name him in the, in the alert? Or? Um, I guess... Oh, no, I don't have an answer for you, Greg. You've got me on that one. Tim, uh, is it possible that 
they were dead before the bodies in the unit were even discovered. So they'd driven down there and, and were dead before anyone even knew. Yeah, it's completely completely possible, Bianca, but we won't won't know until um indications at the scene was that they had been deceased for some some period when they were located at nine thirty last night, but we don't know exactly how long. The twenty um, month old boy, is he going to remain in custody of the Uh at least temporarily, yes. Um the Kyla's dad, um have you officially released his name? No, no. Uh, he's got these relatives and family in New Zealand and um, he doesn't have a lot of close uh, associates or family in Australia, or well, none that we've been able to discover, so uh, we're working with New Zealand police to make sure everyone's advised over there first. Thanks, Tim. Okay, that's all right. Thanks, mate. Thanks.